So there I am. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here in Istanbul talking about uh, Stockholm and Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we uh, had the privilege of meeting a Turkish delegation at the Turkish Embassy in Stockholm. And I've found these new acquaintances here today again, actually doing business in Stockholm. It's already materialized in business. Uh, and of course, that's one of the main reasons why I'm here uh, to convey and say that you're all welcome to Stockholm and to increase the exchange between Stockholm, Turkey and the rest of the world. Uh, just to give you a first glance of what Stockholm is, I'd like to show you the first video. Thanks. You might have stumbled upon one of these before. Yes, it's a chair. But it's also ridiculously bright summer nights. Uber local craft beer. Instagram food. Boat rides to work. doesn't have to be a yellow chair, uh, but I'd love to see you sit on one of those chairs in Stockholm soon. Now, I am supposed to talk to you about uh, how values foster sustainability, and uh, that comes typically very good for Sweden and for Swedes. Uh, Stockholm and Sweden has for a very long time been recognized as a progressive country. Uh, equality and human rights have stood at the forefront of what we do for a very, very, very long time. And this has led to a rather unique societal model, actually. That societal model is sometimes referred to as the Nordic model and is sometimes referred to as the Scandinavian model. But what it stands out for is that it gives equal rights to everyone in Sweden. Um, to give you an idea of what we think this is, I can use the words that we use in the brand, to brand Sweden. Now, <clears throat> the first word that we use when we describe Sweden is progressive. Sweden is a progressive country. We want to strive forward constantly. We are eager to change. We are actually one of the nations in the world that are earliest on adopting new technologies. Now, that's usually a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Sometimes we can become too progressive, too early adopting so that we use things that are not, well, really technologically viable yet. But the, progress, the progressive sentence that we have, well, it makes us to be in the forefront of societal change. Now, from this progressive standpoint comes our core values. Openness. Openness as a core value. So we don't build walls. We don't build walls. Instead, we open our arms to embrace people, no matter of religious or sexual beliefs. It's very important for us to be open. <coughs> We're genuine. Genuine in the sense that you see what you get, or you get what you see. Uh, what you saw in these pictures, that's what you get. Now, sometimes we perhaps overdo it. We tend to show you more pictures on sunny summer days, uh, but on the other hand, it's fairly beautiful in the wintertime as well, even though it's not light it's just as long uh, during the winter as it is in the summer. In the summer, the sun virtually never sets. In the winter, the sun virtually never goes up. Now, we're also considerate for the third core value. And consideration is, of course, taking care of each other, but also taking care of our guests. 
But the caring also, of course, translates into taking care of our heritage, the things that we've got from the generations before us. We need to take care of the environment. The environment is a very important thing in Sweden, in the entire world, but one of our core things in Sweden is that you have clean air, clean water, high air, breathable air. And we know when we talk to other nationalities about what, what, what Sweden represents, the clean air and the clean water is very important. Uh, the, the fourth um, core value is innovative. Sweden is known as perhaps one of the most innovative countries in the world. So when you come to Sweden, you need to feel that as well. And I think that you will. I think that you can feel that Sweden is trying to use innovation not only within the tourism industry, but also, of course, within every industry. So that's why when I, I have the pleasure of eating breakfast with the general consul here in, in Istanbul today, uh, we talked about Swedish companies that actually has been working here in Istanbul since the 1890s, when Ericsson, for instance, installed the first telephone in the Sultan's palace. So the, the relations between Sweden and Turkey goes very long back, but Swedish companies have installed technological solutions here in Istanbul for almost 130 years. That's what I think is rather innovative, and that's of course something that we live with also. So, when we go abroad, we market Stockholm as the capital of Scandinavia. Uh, there is no such country as Scandinavia, uh, but we grabbed that position, sometimes to the uses of those coming from Copenhagen or Oslo or Helsinki. Uh, but taking that position, stating that we are the capital of Scandinavia, we are that because we are the biggest city, the most vibrant city in the Scandinavian region. But the Scandinavian way of living is also something that is very much embraced in Stockholm. When I started working here, I said that value-based communication is perhaps one of the most important things that we can use. Value-based communication to reach out to those who want to visit Stockholm because Stockholm is something else. Stockholm can offer things that not many other uh, destinations can. And it has, of course, to do with those core values that I, that I just stated, that I just talked about. To give you another idea of how that might make, how that might work, what would it look like when we, when we market Stockholm abroad today? Um, I'm gonna show you a video soon, not really yet, soon. Uh, we, we, we use the value-based communications and we enhance it with technological progress that we've done in Stockholm. And this video uh, shows how we try to promote Stockholm against the American audience. Uh, together with SAS, the big uh, Scandinavian airliner. So we can go with video number two, please. When Americans think of Stockholm, many think of it as the capital of skinny jeans and flat packs. There is so much more to this place. Stockholm is where you find creativity on almost every street corner. This is where groundbreaking technology sees daylight, where new trends are set and the next worldwide hit is written. I've lived and worked in Stockholm for a couple of years. I know where to go, where not to go, how to spend a rainy Sunday, and where to spend half a paycheck. Scandinavian Airlines started a new direct route between LA and Stockholm that makes the trip five hours shorter. So now I'm gonna fly over a couple of Angelinos, but not just any Angelinos. I'm going to meet up with my Instagram friend crushes, Brie and Denise, and show them my Stockholm. Do you also want to explore the real Stockholm? Now you and a friend can get the chance to fly over and experience the city to its fullest, just like a local. Go to visit Stockholm on Instagram to read more. Hey Doa! Now when doing this video, of course, as you see, we are, we are targeting us towards the millennials but we are using the values that Stockholm stands for. So we're not afraid of saying that, well, in this city, you are more, more likely to see a father going with a stroller than a mother. I mean, parental leave for fathers are, are as common as it is for, for mothers, for instance. But this city is also the hub for unicorn companies. Do you know about what a unicorn company is? 
It's a company that has a market cap value of $1 billion when it goes public. So Stockholm is the second city in the world with the biggest uh, unicorn companies, after, only after uh, Eastern, Eastern uh, California. Now, this of course means something for how we tend to say that, well, when you're welcome to Stockholm, you need to embrace yourself into this environment, and we're using this environment for ordinary visitors as, as, as well. When we say Stockholm, the capital of Scandinavia, we say that to investors, as much as we say it to visitors, to Congress delegates, or just for those coming for a MICE event. Stockholm, the capital of Scandinavia, is the same message, no matter what you are. Because if you come as a Congress delegate, sometimes you come back with your family. Or if you come as a tourist, sometimes you come back as an investor. So we tend to think that the same message is something that you need to send, no matter what the target group is. But you need to have some order in how you communicate and how you do that communication. And that's where the value-based communication becomes so important. You need to align your communication in a way that you address what the target group really, really wants to hear. Now, I believe that more and more today, especially when you look at the millennials, you want to go somewhere where you can cuddle in and feel that you are, well, quite at home. And in order to do that, you need to create an environment and you need to send something that actually is that. And I think that that video shows you how that is. You're looking for that kind of people that wants to feel inside that kind of mode. Uh, you might ask yourself, how come then, if Stockholm, as a fairly small city compared to Istanbul and many other cities, it soon has one million citizens in the bigger metropolitan area, 2.5, so Istanbul is almost 10 times bigger, uh, now, then, Stockholm is a small city, and Sweden is a small country. How come we have so many unicorns? I think there are many, many explanations to that. One explanation is that uh, when we bring up our athletes, we do it on a wide scale. Everybody's welcome. If you see a football, football team or a hockey team, we train many, many young people in order to get one big star. Take uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, for instance. He was brought up in that environment before being a big football star in now Manchester United. But we've had others. Bjorn Borg, if you know, the tennis player, uh, and uh, even, even further on. Many, many, many. But it goes on to explaining not only that we have more athletes of that kind, even if we are a small country, we also have more big companies and why is that? Why is that? And I do believe that is because we, from the beginning, have been an open society. We've been open from the start. Because being a small country with a small market, if you are a businessman, you need to find your market abroad. So every company, I mean, we had Ericsson in the 1890s being here in Istanbul, making business. They had to. Sweden was too small. The startup companies today in Stockholm is doing the same. They go global from day one because they have to. So when I'm communicating Stockholm to tourists, I'm communicating Stockholm to investors in the same way because it makes sense. Now, uh, to give you the idea of the results of this, I'm going to show you something that's quite funny, I think at least. Uh, it's a, bit, it's a longer video, not that long, uh, three minutes about, uh, and it's, uh, it's some magic in it, so we can play the third. Thank you. Stockholm is Europe's fastest growing city. A big study by PricewaterhouseCoopers recently compared 27 cities at the center of the world economy. For intellectual capital and innovation, Stockholm ranks number one. We rank number one for entrepreneurial environment and number one for health, safety and security. Moving to Stockholm is not a coincidence. The quality of life 
is exceptional. The longest arts exhibition in the world is inside the Stockholm subway system. Also, the natural beauty of Stockholm makes it a pleasure getting around by foot or bicycle. We have 760 kilometers of bike lanes in the city, which is built on 14 islands, connected by 57 bridges. The city is made up of one third parks and green spaces and another third waterways. The water out here by City Hall is actually clean enough to drink. I've had wars. Oh, it reminds me, I need to recycle a couple of uh, aces for the rest of this. In Sweden, we recycle 99% of household waste. And thinking green pays off. In an extensive three year study measuring air pollution in 25 European cities, Stockholm alone aced it and met WHO air quality guidelines. The average city had twice our air pollution, the worst one, four times more. Uh, compared to there, living in Stockholm adds almost two years to my life expectancy, just from breathing clean air. So, in 2010, Stockholm was elected European Green Capital, the first city to ever receive this honor. That is not a coincidence. Last year, we were the most internet connected country in the world. Now, I'm sad to admit we have dropped and uh, we are now only the second most internet connected country in the world. But still, for the third year in a row, Sweden tops the EU Commission's list of innovation in the Union. Stockholm's GDP growth last year was 68% higher than the EU27 average. Innovative market leaders like Skype and Spotify were founded in Stockholm. That is not a coincidence. It's a great place to work, but more than that, to live and love. Stockholm has 50% singles, but it's also ideal for starting a family, for all families. If you have kids, you get 480 days of paid parental leave. Babies have subsidized childcare and growing up. Schools and university costs nothing. And according to Global Age Watch, the quality of life for the elderly in Sweden is the highest in the world. Stockholm is Europe's fastest growing city. That's not a coincidence. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. So, I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's, and it's multi-talented. It doesn't only do that. It does, uh, it does things with iPads as well. He pours wine from iPads. I don't know how he does it, but it's, uh, it's an amazing guy. Uh, now, I'm supposed to talk about sustainability, and I think that he speaks about su sustainability perhaps even better than I do. Uh, I'm certain that you understand it at least better than, than, than when he does it. But sustainability, as you know, it's, it's, it's basically three different things. It's three pillars. It's based on economic sustainability, social sustainability, and ecological sustainability. Now, you can use these three core values, uh, four core values that, that I mentioned before, and try to grade them into these different sustainabilities to understand, okay, what of these core values goes into the sustainability and what does that mean for communication of what we do when we attract tourists and visitors. Now, to, when it comes down to the environmental sustainability, it's quite clear that it's considered innovative, that it's the most clear uh, ideas that we have for, for, for values. Uh, considered because, of course, when we consider, we don't overuse or overconsume the environment. And as you saw, it would of course not be good for Stockholm if we couldn't drink the water outside, uh, outside the city hall. So that's an aspect that we have. We need to take care of the environment. But we can also use innovation, use innovation to enhance the fact that we use less uh, fuel-driven cars instead of using other cars. That's been done all over the world, but in Stockholm we have Scania uh, producing electrical buses.
Skenia that is also a company present here in Turkey. Uh, when it comes down to the social pillar, I'd say that it's openness and considerate that most relates to, to, uh, to that pillar. And openness, of course, because a social framework that you saw uh, on the video as well, that social framework is here because we are open as a society and not judging. At the same time, considerate uh, is the other value that goes to uh, the, the social pillar. Being considerate is, of course, taking care of each other. And of that reason, the social pillar is there. Now, how do we take care of each other? Well, we have 480 days of parental leave. For instance, it doesn't cost anything to go to school when you're young. Now, to the economic pillar then, it's genuine and innovative. Uh, and when it comes down to the genuine, what you see is what you get. So, what you see is what you get. And when it come, comes down to the economic, uh, uh, the innovative, we try to do different things in Stockholm to enhance your, what you see. Uh, and later on this year, I'm pleased to announce that if you want to meet Vikings, uh, you should come to Stockholm um, in April. A Viking Museum is, uh, is being published, or presented, inaugurated, uh, and that Viking Museum will show you Vikings the way they were. They didn't have horns on their helmets. <laughs> that's, that's false. They are sold as a tourist item in Stockholm. Don't buy it because it's not true. Uh, among other things. And one thing that is particularly interesting is that the woman in the Viking culture was very strong because the man was out fighting. So that story is being told at the Viking Museum later on this year. I just want to end, end up with a couple of slides. Um, you've seen this now for a while. We're not that far away. It takes three hours to go here, approximately three hours. It's, it's a very good connection uh, with, uh, with Turkish Airlines, and we are improving the accessibility to Stockholm constantly. Uh, Stockholm Arlanda is one of the biggest, it's not saying, well, really coming, becoming to be a big, big, big airport in this region. Uh, we're close to nature. This is basically, <clears throat> this is in the city center, <clears throat> again during summertime. Uh, we have 14 islands and 57 bridges, which makes it a uniquely beautiful city. The city plan has actually stipulated a very careful build-out of the city. So you have this five storage in, in quarters that you build, and that's what you, what you get also. So it's a very nice city. It makes it breathable and livable. Anybody knows about this? The Nobel Prize? It's not only the banquet, but I talked about innovation and I talked about industry. Uh, and uh, when Alfred Nobel died, this is a history that goes back hundreds of years as well. So it's really in our DNA. And we need to communicate that, as I said, not only to, not, not trying to differ it between different visitors, uh, but use it for all sorts of visitors. Just a few companies to, to mention a couple. Uh, Minecraft up there to the right was sold for $2.5 billion. And he was, he was a guy with a, <laughs> well, I mean, an ordinary guy uh, who just found out something like that. And uh, then Microsoft called him and said, hey, do you want to have $2.5 billion for your company? And he said, well, yeah. So now he, I think he bought a house in, in, in uh, Los Angeles and stuff like that. Uh, a, a, Amazing, really. But then Spotify, Skype, Toca Boca, if you haven't seen it, your kids definitely have, and, and then Ericsson, of course. Uh, really amazing innovation power in, in this city and in this country. We account for 53% of the European uh, exits in the Nordic countries. Uh, Stockholm alone, five. London had four. Berlin had three. Is London a bigger city than Stockholm? How much bigger is London than Stockholm? So, quite productive. Uh, where, okay, so where are our, our visitors? Where, where do they come from? Well, Germany tops, UK second, USA third, Norway fourth. Turkey uh, had a 30% um, 
increase last year, which is extremely, uh, extremely pleasing, and we hope to increase that even further. China had 40, so you can come there and grab China next year, okay? Uh, just to give you a couple of others, we have the old town, the Royal Heritage, um, City Hall, where the Noble Bank Caddy is. Uh, and it's, it's all, I mean, you can go here, open, uh, not on that day, <laughs> then it's closed, but other days you can go there and experience uh, the site for the Noble Bank Caddy yourself. This is the Vasa ship. It's, uh, it was a ship built uh, for the commission by the king in the uh, 17th, no, 17th century, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it sank basically after 10 minutes after it made sea because it was built too tall. Uh, so it sank and it lay there for 300 years and then they picked it up. So this is the best preserved ship from this time uh, and one of the most popular destinations in Stockholm. It, it attracts, I think, if I'm remembering it right now, some 1.5 million uh, visitors each year. The subway system is, as we heard, one of the longest art, the longest art, art exhibition in the world. Uh, showing up, showcasing different things. Uh, it's a very long art gallery. Looking like this, here we have the uh, uh, HBDQ uh, uh, flag. And then we have the seasons. We have four very profound seasons. So we have the winter, it's cold, it's dark, I warn you, but it's magic as well. We have the spring, when it's becoming greener and warmer and sunnier. We have the summer, when the days never end, it goes on forever. Uh, and then the autumn, with that crisp, high, clean air and the explosion of colors. We do things like this, like this different uh, attractions. This is. Uh, a uh, royal palace sprint. It's, uh, it's uh, in, in the uh, World Cup and it goes around the castle, the royal castle in the city of Stockholm. And then we have something that is a jewel. We have an archipelago outside Stockholm with 30,000 islands. 30,000 islands. And the longer out you get, the more lonely you get, uh, and the more beautiful it gets. It's, it's a gem. Uh, that we really recommend if you want to visit. So, thank you.